When you think of the term the valley, there truly is only one that stands out from the rest. If you're from Southern California, you'll likely have your own personal thoughts and opinions on what you think the valley is like. The great thing about the valley is that, like the city of LA, it's so diverse. There are good neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods, authentic food spots, new apartment buildings, tons of new development home communities, and areas that have been around from before your grandparents were born. Being a native Angelito and Valley native myself, I feel like I've been around the block once or twice when it comes to all neighborhoods in the Valley. So by the end of this video, you should feel like a native Angelino yourself because I'm gonna be touching on everything that the Valley has to offer. Also, let me know down in the comments if you have any specific questions about the San Fernando Valley when it comes to anything, cost of living, specific restaurants, good or bad areas, and everything in between. So the San Fernando Valley is located in the Northwest portion of the Los Angeles County. And depending on where you are, we say that everything is about 20 minutes away. Whether you're going to the beach, whether you're going to Beverly Hills, downtown LA, everything's 20 to 30 minutes. Unless you're gonna be leaving at 4 p.m. on a weekday, then just add an extra zero to that. Just kidding. Not really. This is gonna be a raw video on insights of the valley as I scroll around through the neighborhoods. We're gonna start in the upper northwest portion of the valley and then work our way in a loop and go through every neighborhood, good places to eat, good places to go out, places to live, things to do with the family, parks, entertainment, everything else. But let's get started. Check out the map right here. So here it is, the San Fernando Valley. I did make one of these videos in 2023 and a lot of you commented that either grew up in the valley are currently living in the valley, specific nostalgic moments that you encountered when growing up in the valley, or just anything else when it comes to specific neighborhoods down here. So I'm going to start, as I said, in the northwest portion, uh, which is Chatsworth. We're gonna start in Chatsworth, and I have done a lot of other videos about Chatsworth because I know the area well. I grew up here in the west, western region of the San Fernando Valley. So you've got Twin Lakes. This is an old neighborhood in the valley. Some of these homes are up to 100 years old. It's pretty crazy when you see them. And then as you go up to Panga here and the 118 where it connects basically pretty much the end of the valley. That's before you go to the Rocky Peak Church. Anyone that is a Christian that attends church out there, phenomenal area. And Rocky Peak Trailhead, good hiking trail. And as I said, this is just I'm just going to go through the map. So it's gonna be a very raw video here. Indian Hills Mobile Home Village. Now this is a mobile home park. You can actually buy pretty cheap mobile homes here in this park. One of the less expensive areas to purchase any kind of home here in the valley. And as you go a little more north, let me get the satellite going for you guys so you can kind of see that we're in the mountains here. So there's a lot of communities here in Chatsworth. As you keep going up Poema here, there's a, there's a gate that leads to one of the more prestigious communities in Chatsworth right here. You know, you know that they filmed The Purge 1 in this community. Massive homes there. I wonder if they can, no, you can't even drop a little, little street view guy in that area. So you got condos and then up here, Deer Lake Ranch community by Polte Homes, Vandale, Lancey. I've done several videos on this channel about these new construction homes and communities. If you have any questions about that, check out the rest of my channel. But the 118 freeway is going to be your, your daily commute. If you're up here in the northern San Fernando Valley, you have Porter Ranch. Also, tons of brand new construction communities. If you're going to be buying a home, Toll Brothers dominates this area. And they've been building homes for the past several years all the way up into the mountains here. So, And then you have Topanga Canyon, one of the more popular streets. It might as well be its own freeway. It's the 27, but it's not a freeway, but it'll lead you from the 118 all the way down here to the 101 freeway. Cut through several different neighborhoods such as Canoga Park, Woodland Hills, and then you get down to the 101. That'll take you to Calabasas. So that's what you'll need to know if you're going to be commuting around this western portion of the valley. Chatsworth, let's see what we got here. So there are a lot of good food places to eat in Chatsworth. Los Toros, a classic Mexican spot. If you guys know anything about Chatsworth, you know about Los Toros. You know about Munchbox. Is it even going to be shown here on the map? Where's the Munchbox? It's, uh, there it is. This is, this I think was actually named a historical landmark in Chatsworth. Great fast food. Shout out to them. Not a, not a sponsored video by them, but you know, you got to get them credit where it's due. Great sushi spots around here. You got Maru around here, right next to the Ralph's, Hikari, McDonald's. 
Chatsworth is a nice family oriented neighborhood and you can get a million dollar home that's about 2,000, 2,400 square feet or so. It's a nice, great, great schools in the area. You got, you got Chatsworth High School, public school as well. And then let's, let's keep on moving. So this video is not insanely long, but it will be pretty long. I'm just going to keep it raw and keep it going. Mason Park, nice area, a couple baseball fields. I think they actually filmed, um, what's it called bad news bears here at Mason Park in the Valley. If you guys have ever seen a bad news bears, great baseball movie. We go up, there's another church, Shepherd of the Hills Church right there. It's a massive church. I actually heard Manny Pacquiao has attended a few, um, has gone to, to church there before. Porter Ranch Town Center, this was, this is just where you're gonna be doing uh, dining, shopping, there's an islands, there's an in and out, then you got a Walmart, and then they got the new shopping center just to the west of that where they just built this within the last couple of years, Whole Foods, a couple nice, Dining re area restaurants such as Finney's, Gus's, and then Lure Fish House, a little more high end. And then you got your classics, Cava, there's a Chipotle, Habit, all that good stuff. And there's a there's a hospital here in Porter Ranch. Porter Ranch truly is just not, I've been saying up and coming for the past four years, but I think they're just about complete. I mean, the homes up there are going up to $4 million now. So there's, there's a lot to see and do in Porter Ranch, especially being right off the 118, you get views if you're living up there. And as I said, this is what, where you're gonna be doing most of your dining, shopping, eating if you're in Porter Ranch. And now you might've wondered what all this green stuff is around here. That's Porter Valley Country Club. If you're a golfer and you're into golf, it's a pretty tough course, honestly, because of how narrow the fairways are. You're gonna be hitting balls into homes and you don't want that, but thankfully insurance will cover that if you, get a golf ball going through your window. Just make sure you're not sitting too close to the window when someone's gonna be teeing off on uh, hole nine there. And you can see these are some of the older homes there in Porter Ranch surrounding Porter Valley. Goes all the way up to Castle Bay Lane Charter School. It's a nice little elementary school. Receda Point hiking trail wrapping around here. Rinaldi is going to be the main passerby street up there in Porter Ranch and it leads us to Granada Hills. Granada Hills is the next city right next to Porter Ranch, and you have Robert Frost Middle School. I know a lot of people that attended that middle school, and then there's also Granada High School as well. There's another country club in Knollwood, a golf course. It's used to be a country club, but now it's actually a public course if you want to play at Knollwood, but I would probably recommend uh, playing somewhere else. I Last time I played Knollwood, not a great experience. They need to uh, maintain that course a little bit better. And as you keep going north, you're gonna go all the way to the Silmar area if you go around here. All the way up Balboa, we'll, we'll take you to the five freeway that leads up to Santa Clarita, but we're not gonna be talking about Santa Clarita because that's not the San Fernando Valley. I have done videos in Santa Clarita though because we do a lot of business in the new construction community up there when it comes to real estate. But then there's, uh, let's see, what else is there? here in Granada Hills. So one thing about Granada Hills that you wouldn't know unless you lived in the valley, if you're gonna be commuting north up the five freeway and you're on the 118, you're going to be, you can cut up Balboa right here. It's a little shortcut. If you didn't know, you exit Balboa, cut all the way up and there you're on the five. Or if there's not that much traffic, you cut all the way to the 405, then the five, then, then boom. But that's just a little secret for people that might have been commuting from the north of San Fernando Valley up to the Santa Clarita area. Then you got Silmar. Silmar is a little bit on the lower end side of things when it comes to all these neighborhoods in the north San Fernando Valley. You got Chatsworth, Porter Ranch is the higher end. Granada Hills is nice. And then there's some really, actually I think uh, there's a couple celebrities that live in Granada Hills as well. But then you got Silmar, a little bit on the, the lower end scale. Silmar High School is there. You've got Silmar Park, more golf courses. El Carrizo, not the best golf course than there is. As you keep getting here in the northern area, not the greatest neighborhoods if you'll be in Silmar, but I know a lot of people that grew up in Silmar and they love it. They call it home, obviously. You're still in the San Fernando Valley. You have a lot of local Mexican food spots, nice, great burrito, great breakfast burritos. I've had a, quite a few of them. And as you go a little more south, then you'll land into San Fernando, the hub, 
the San Fernando Valley is what they call it. So San Fernando is kind of in the middle between, not really in the middle because the middle of the valley I'd say is Panorama City. And then as you go, as you keep on moving, San Fernando, Pacoima, these are areas that probably on the, the lowest, almost the lowest ends of the San Fernando Valley when it comes to, let's say, crime rates, safety, uh, cost of things. So you will be getting a good deal on a home if you're gonna be living in San Fernando, Pacoima. And then you'll go over here to Hanson Dam, the famous Hanson Dam. So there's a Hanson Dam golf course and then there is an actual dam right there. Let's check it out. Good old Hanson Dam. You've got the Aquatic Center. You've got the Wildlife Preserve. You've got the, a horse park. There is just, uh, that's a great thing about LA that you don't get in New York. Maybe in New York, you only see Central Park as being the most vast and wide open greenery. But in LA, there are so many parks, lots of golf courses, lots of just areas to go hiking. And Hanson Dam, you'll always see people walking along the top of that dam, taking in the views. Sunrise, sunset, that's a cool little area to go here in the valley on the eastern portion of the valley. And you go, keep going down these areas, Shadow Hills, Hanson Hills, similar to what we'd be seeing here along the mountains. But that was most of the north San Fernando Valley. I'm gonna cut over to the opposite end now. We're gonna go back to Chatsworth. If you guys are keeping up, I hope you, if you've made it this far, hit the like button, why don't you? You're gonna learn a lot about the San Fernando Valley throughout this video. As I said, I'm just gonna, just gonna point and shoot basically as I move along. So you're gonna be moving along with me. We're back in Chatsworth. And one thing I wanted to touch on Chatsworth here in the, the center right next to, let me show you. This is a lot, there's a lot of commercial buildings here in the middle, Canoga Park, South Chatsworth area and a few hotels as well. And then as you go more east, east of the, Tep or no, not east, west of Topanga Canyon Boulevard, these are pretty upscale neighborhoods. You'll get $2 million homes that are nice and gated here on the western portion of, the, of Topanga Canyon. And I've been making a lot of videos on this specific new construction community. It's called Hidden Oaks that they're actually building here in the mountains. It's going to be insane. Um, by the end of this year, they should be done in 2024. We'll see how those look, but if you have any questions, those are gonna be in the $3 million range, which is wild that you can build brand new construction homes in this area that will be going for $3 million. And you might be thinking, who is going to be living that far west in the valley for $3 million? I mean, the freeway isn't that close, 118, you're on the very edge of the valley. Well, if you just go five minutes south, down here, Box Canyon, this is actually a shortcut to, let's say the West Hills area, if you're in Chatsworth, you'll go, you'll get to even more high-end communities such as Bell Canyon, where a lot of A-list celebrities live right here. Something interesting about Bell Canyon, I'm not gonna talk too much about it because te technically it is in the Ventura County. Even though it may look like it's in the San Fernando Valley, which is in the LA County, Bell Canyon, the, uh, the border cuts off right before Bell Canyon. Let's see if the map shows us that. If we type it in, let's get the, I guess it doesn't give us the red border, but right here is where the border would be from the LA County. Oh wait, let's type in El Los Angeles County. And then boom, let's take a look. Look at that. There's the red line. It cuts you off right before the gate of Bell Canyon, it, but you cannot access Bell Canyon from the Ventura County. You have to access it from the LA County. So you get all the benefits of the Ventura County when it comes to property taxes, but all the benefits of living in the San Fernando Valley in the LA County, which is, which is pretty cool. I always thought that was interesting. And there's homes up to five plus million dollars there in Bell Canyon. Joe Rogan sold his Bell Canyon home to move to Texas and continue on with this podcast as is. You know, he signed for a hundred plus million dollars with Spotify, which is insane. I'm sure you've heard about that. We're down here in West Hills. This is pretty cool, West Hills. All of these windy roads are actually up on a hill. That's why they call it West Hills. Even though you're not in the hills like you would be in Bell Canyon, all these windy roads are, there's a lot of there's a lot of ups and downs and slopes and you'll be able to have some views from your backyard, pretty unique valley views 
here in West Hills. There's a West Hills Medical Hospital, great private high schools such as Chaminade College Prep. They have a blue football field, which is unique, just similar to Boise State. And then a couple other schools. Let's see, we've got Pomelo Community School, and then you've got lots of markets, lots of mom and pop restaurants and Mexican food, definitely, there's a lot of them in the San Fernando Valley specifically. What else? We, we got Nap, Nap Ranch, a little small baseball facility. There's also West Hills Baseball Field, where a lot of people will go from all, all over the valley. This is one of the better baseball, uh, like, little leagues, even though it's not a little league. It's, um, I forgot what they call it, like a pony league there on the west. Right off Valley Circle. And there's a lot of hiking trails here as well. Castle Peak. You got Bell Canyon Trail, and let's keep on moving. West Hills, great area. What else do you guys want to know about West Hills? As we keep on going to the east side of West Hills, back to Topanga Canyon. All right, we're jumping around. Canoga Park is, some addresses are interesting because it would, you might think you live in West Hills, but it actually is Canoga Park and vice versa. There are some decent homes in Canoga Park, but they're not really building that many remodels. Not many developments are going on because you don't really uh, get a great return on your investment when you're going to remodel or uh, a fixer upper there in Canoga. So it's on the lower end of the valley, That, as well as Winnetka is okay. And then as you keep going north, you can see this is where I was talking about all the commercial buildings. There's also the Northridge Mall as we keep moving up. Okay, now we're just jumping around everywhere. But you got the Northridge Mall, one of the bigger malls in the heart of the San Fernando Valley. You've got a lot going on here. They have a Dave & Buster's now. They have, they have a you know CPK. They have everything you need. A Yard House, Buffalo Wild Wings. There's a Super King. There's a Ross. There's everything you might imagine there being at a mall. They have it here at the Northridge Fashion Center. It gets packed during the holidays, obviously. And there's even places like a Lowe's right next to it, Olive Garden. I mean, just, just name it, and you've got it here at the Northridge Mall. And that might be because there's a university here next to the Northridge Mall, and that would be Cal State University CSUN. Shout out to all the matadors out there that are watching this video. I know there's a lot of you that are from the Valley. If you're a matador, leave a comment down below. I know hundreds of people that went to CSUN, even though I did not myself. And you've got all of your, they, they've just done a lot of building in these new, with new franchisee restaurants such as you got a Dave Hot Chicken, you've got a lot of Boba cafes that have been built up, you've got CCC, California Chicken Cafe, of course at Chipotle right off campus. It's a great school, great university, do some research on it if you are interested in going or if you have kids that might want to go and live somewhere. That's not UCLA in Los Angeles or USC. Those are great schools, but CSUN, you also can get a bachelor's degree from uh, Cal State Northridge as well. As you keep going north, Gallery of Market, you've got a lot, just a lot going on in this portion of the valley because Northridge and Granada Hills border each other. You can see how close Granada Hills Charter High School is to CSUN, just a couple of blocks away. Tons of people from Granada Hills Charter go to CSUN. It's practically in the same neighborhood. As you keep going east, Sherwood Forest. Oh, this is this is a great neighborhood. This is one of the more expensive neighborhoods in almost the entire valley because the homes do range over two million. Let me drop a little little guy here in the Sherwood Forest because you get some of the larger flat lots. If we're talking real estate here, and gates. Look at this specifically. Look at that driveway. Look at that gate. And I just dropped off this little satellite guy, this street map guy, on a random street. I mean, look at these homes, large, a lot of them, most of them I'd say are single story homes with gates, large front yards, and like acre lots, pretty massive homes there. Sherwood Forest, hidden gem of a community. And it is also like, if let's say you buy a two and a half million dollar house in Sherwood Forest, which would get you a really nice home. You're right next to the Van Nuys Airport. If you have to commute area places, if you are uh, someone that's that's traveling a lot for work, you got the Van Nuys Airport right there. So it's either the Van Nuys Airport, the Burbank Airport. Um, there is a tiny airport, the Whit Whiteman Airport there in uh, Pacoima. But the Van Nuys Airport is actually the number one airport for private jets. 
I believe in California, I mean, I, this is complete, a complete guess, but it could be in the entire, the entire country. I don't, don't quote me on that, but I do know that the Kardashians will fly their private jet out of there. Like the president has the rock, just you name an A-list celebrity. They have probably flown private or their own personal private jet out of the Van Nuys airport, which is an interesting location because Van Nuys is not the greatest city. When you think of Van Nuys, I'm sure most of you guys don't think of a luxurious high-end community. You got the Van Nuys DMV two blocks away, and that, that is one of the worst places in the entire valley. I've, I've been there a couple times, never want to go back. Any DMV, you probably should just stay away. But that that's Van Nuys right there. Van Nuys it stretches, it so it borders uh, Panorama City, which there is a nice mall in the Panorama City, an underrated mall, I would say. If you're from Panorama City, you probably... You probably are, um, I mean, I haven't been to the mall that many times, but there is, there's a Regency Theaters, Van Nuys. I mean, Panorama City has a lot to offer. It, it probably feels like more of a small town than a lot of these other neighborhoods in LA. You've got North Hills right there, which is also okay. Not a terrible area, but a lot of these blend in with each other. Arlita, Van Nuys, Panorama City. But as you keep going south, it gets nicer and nicer as we have the 405 basically splitting the Van Nuys Airport and this area, I'd say stay west of the 405 if you want a more upscale, high-end neighborhood, less crime, then stay west of the 405 because this portion in the center between the 170, the five south, or everything right here is probably the, the lower end of the valley. But all right, I hope you guys are keeping up. Now we've bounced everywhere. What, what are we doing now? What are we looking at? We've, we've touched on most of the north part of the valley. As I said, this is gonna be a long video. I'm just kind of spewing what I see here on the map of the valley. Sun Valley, not a bad area. There's a lot of nice neighborhoods there in Sun Valley, the eastern portion. Burbank Airport is also nice. Burbank is a, okay, let's go to Burbank because, so Burbank is one of the nicer areas in the San Fernando Valley. If you cut down the five freeway, also the one, okay, let me talk about the 170. There's almost no point for the 170 freeway because, well, there is a point. I use it quite frequently. If you're gonna be coming from, let's say Hollywood, downtown West Hollywood and cutting to the north, San Fernando Valley, such as Porter Ranch, Granada Hills. But the 170 literally only stretches from the 101 freeway right here, West Toluca Lake, you see, up to Arlita, just right here. It's, you'll be on it for five minutes and you're, it's just a shortcut. It's the smallest freeway in all of Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken. And then you can go to, from the five, you can go to the Burbank Airport. I would recommend using the Burbank Airport over LAX because LAX is obviously, it's, there's just too much traffic there. There's, it's, it gets confusing at times. There's a lot going on, but Burbank gets you to most places domestically that you'd want to go. It's a large airport. The, uh, the Burbank, Bob Hope Airport, okay. And then in Burbank specifically, there's a lot in Burbank. One of the nicer malls in Burbank. There's a lot of new construction condos. You can rent an apartment for a lot cheaper than anywhere else that's pretty upscale and modern. There is, let's see, there's actually, let's go to, I'm trying, where's Flappers? Flappers Comedy Club. That's in Burbank. That's in the heart of basically everything. You walk around this entire area of Burbank and you'll feel like you're in a, a really nice city in Los Angeles. This, I mean, what's more to say than that? There's everything you'd want. You've got every restaurant you'd want. It's, uh, there's gonna be people walking around all times of, di of the day. Let me drop a little guy here. Let's give some, let's give some credit where credit's due to Burbank. Okay, that's... Not the greatest place to drop my guy off, but let's let's keep on moving here. Let's see what we got. All right, that shouldn't have, shouldn't have popped up. Let's see. I mean, you just go to Burbank for yourself and you'll see. If you live in Burbank, you're a little bit isolated, even though you're 10, 15 minutes away from downtown. You're right next to Glendale as well, but you will have to drive anywhere to, to go to Glendale, let's say, Eagle Rock, um, and Verdugo all up in the hills. Nice hiking trails there in Burbank. And I've done a couple videos about Burbank specifically. There's actually seven different unique neighborhoods in Burbank and it goes all the way up here, up into the Verdugo mountains. You got El Mer uh, Mirad Miradero. Okay, that's uh, tough to say. Grandview, 
And then DeBell Golf Course, another nice golf course if you guys are into golf. And then Burbank stretches all the way up north. These are some nice homes with some cool views as well. But that is, that's all Burbank. Everything here you see north of the 5 Freeway, the great area of Burbank. I've, uh, I know a lot of people that are interested in moving to Burbank specifically that come from overseas that we do help out. Actually, I did have one of the best breakfast burritos of my life in Burbank a few weeks ago. I don't remember the name. Probably should look that up. Let's go down here. The 134, this cuts off. This is the south portion of the valley. You got the LA Zoo right there. You got more golf courses, Wilson and Harding. You got Griffith Park, the good old Griffith Park. One of the largest parks, if not the largest, in all of LA. And then you have keep going down. So the 134 does take you to Glendale. Glendale is massive right here. Glendale Galleria. If you haven't been there, I recommend you go there. The Glendale Galleria, the Americana, it was built by the same guy who built um, the Grove down there in central LA, West Hollywood. Let's keep moving. The Travel Town Railroad. There is a really cool... There, Griffith Park has a lot of cool festivities to do during the holidays. They have um, a train that will take you around during, that'll show you a bunch of cool lights as well. They do pumpkin patches around this area. There's a lot to do with the family around the LA Zoo, around this portion right between Glendale and Burbank. Griffith Park, they do a good job at keeping um, the families entertained. And if you keep going a little west, Warner Brothers Studios. There's a lot of people that Come to LA specifically for a weekend and they just want to see the studios. They want to see Warner Brothers Studios and they want to see Universal Studios. Well, good news is they are both right next to each other so you can do that all in one day. Even though there's a lot to see at Universal if you want to do the theme park, if you want to go to Horror Nights, if you want to see it during Christmas time, uh, that's going to take probably a whole day because Universal is massive. Or you just go to City Walk. Don't have to break the bank and go to the actual theme park. City Walk has a lot of nice restaurants as well such as Buca de Beppo, you know. I mean, there's a lot of new restaurants there in City Walk, such as Panda Express, I'm just kidding. Um, they, have, they have more than just that. They've built a lot of new restaurants. I, you'll actually be shocked. If you've been there maybe five plus years ago and you haven't been since maybe 2016 or so, there, you would be surprised at how different Universal City Walk looks. I know I didn't go for a few years, then when I went back, I was shocked. But that's Universal City, Universal Studios. Just, just that's that is uh, that is LA at its finest, right there, just north of Hollywood. And yes, it is in the San Fernando Valley. So then, between Universal and Warner Bros, you got one of the most high. This is the highest, the nicest golf course, probably the highest end golf course in the valley. Lakeside Golf Club. Lots of athletes, celebrities do golf there. And look how nice it looks from the satellite. I've never seen a golf course look this nice. On the satellite view, it looks like the Wynn Golf Course in Vegas. It looks like a professional golf course. It's even nicer than the LA Country Club. I know a lot of people that do like it more than some of these country clubs, but I gotta stop talking about golf. There's probably only 1% of people that golf here. So you got a lot of nice apartments, such as the Ava Toluca Hills. And Toluca Lake is a hidden gem of a neighborhood here in Universal. It's right between NoHo and Universal. Uh, Studio City. I'd say a lot of the Toluca Lake addresses blend in with North Hollywood. Some of them will say Toluca Lake, but they're actually considered North Hollywood or even sometimes Burbank as you cut toward Magnolia Park. So there's some less expensive homes in this Magnolia Park area. And then as you keep going closer to the freeway, Toluca Lake has a lot of great neighborhoods. There's some Cape Cod style homes. There's a lot of great food here in North Hollywood. If you drive down Lancashire, you got the Metro, you've got an Amazon Fresh now, you've got Doghouse. Have you guys been to Doghouse? There's a Doghouse also in Woodland Hills. They have, I mean, don't just go there for the dogs. They have a lot more than, than hot dogs. They have great burritos, great burgers. I mean, honestly, top five breakfast burrito in my opinion. Don't quote me on that. Actually, do quote me on that. Go there and then quote me on that because it's, it's phenomenal. A lot of nice bars. Some low-key nightlife spots there in the North Hollywood district, in the North Hollywood Arts District. But the more north you go in North Hollywood, the worse it gets when it comes to uh, the area. It's going to be, you're going to see a little more homeless, a little more crime. 
as you get to the north portion, I say as you go north of the Metro right here, north of the North Hollywood Rec Center. Then you got the Denny's, the in and outs a lot of small, but this is still Lancashire, it's gonna take you all the way up to this part of North Hollywood, which is why North Hollywood probably gets a, a bad rep. So I would say the more south you are, the better. When it comes to this area, closer to 170 is fine. And then you got Studio City. Now, Studio City, we're here in the, the nicest portion of the San Fernando Valley. That's the Studio City Sherman Oaks Encino District. I'm sure if you guys know anything about, about the valley or don't know anything about the valley, I hope you do now because now we're going to touch on the more the higher end and the more popular neighborhoods in the valley. Studio City has this area called the Silver Triangle. It's right here. It's a silver triangle because, I mean, well, it's shaped like a triangle. You've got Ventura Boulevard that cuts the entire southern portion of the San Fernando Valley right here. And anyone that lives in this portion or knows anything about the valley says that if you are south of Ventura Boulevard, you're, uh, you're, you're in a good area. You're, you're safe when it comes to, and it's more expensive. If you have a home that's $2 million here in the north just north of the boulevard and the, the flatlands here. Once you go south of the boulevard, you start going in the hills, but it, it might, the price could double. It's very possible. But you have everything you'd want in any city here in this portion of Studio City. I love this street right here. It's called Ventura Place. They've just built a lot of new coffee shops, little restaurants. There's really not many car, cars that drive by because look how small it is, Ventura Place. You got this little triangular section with, uh, with a bank, and then you have Jones on 3rd, Prince Street Pizza, Alfred's Coffee. Just These are classic LA places if you've never been. McConnell's, maybe the best ice cream in LA. And uh, what else? Yeah, I mean, those are classic spots. You see a lot of those on the west side. Alfred's, I mean, it's taking over Starbucks. I think I've seen like six Alfred's that they're building within the past month around the, the west side and in the city. It's, it's honestly insane. I can't believe it. Let's keep on going down. There's a Studio City Plaza, little shopping mall at the Trader Joe's. You got a Barnes and Noble and you got a Salt and Straw. You know, McConnell's is better. You got Studio uh, CPK, just anything you think of when it comes to food. Granville, it's a nice, this is a underrated spot to go out, go on a date, grab a drink, grab a, a burger. It's a good place to, to go to dinner with your family even. That's a good, it's the, the setting, the vibe at all the Granvilles in LA are very, very nice and maybe maybe underrated, but if you know about Granville, you'd probably believe me with that one. Let's see, what else? We got a Katsuya there. Oh, Studio City. We've got Sushi Row in Studio City. If you know, you know, there is a stretch right here in Studio City where you're gonna get a lot of nice sushi spots, almost Competitive with Sawtell down in West LA where you have Japantown. Lots of nice sushi spots here in Sawtell. Look at that, Japantown. But if you go up to Studio City, you actually have Sushi Row with a ton of sushi restaurants. And uh, yeah, so let's keep on keeping on here. Let's see what else we got. And if you've made it this far in the video, hit the like button, subscribe. We're having fun here. We're talking about the Valley and I'm posting videos similar to this, talking about all things Los Angeles in the future. I've done a ton over the past couple of years on this channel and I post about homes, real estate, anything else that you'd want to see here in LA. But let's keep on moving. All right, where were we? We were Silver Triangle, Studio City, great area to live. As you keep going into the hills of Studio City, there's lots of nice homes. I mean, they can go up to seven, 10 million. Like there's a lot of expensive homes, a lot of A-listers that live there in Studio City. But let's keep going on. That's why it's so expensive. I'm not gonna be talking too much about the celebrities. We're talking about the normal people, the regular people. That's what makes up the majority of the Valley. And that's why people like us Love the Valley. When you're from the Valley, you take pride in being from the Valley, I would say, because there's just a lot to see and do when it comes to the San Fernando Valley. As you cut west on Ventura, you slowly see all the little retail shops and restaurants, the cafes. Where else are, where else is good? I wanna give you guys some recommendations. Okay, so Home State, this is a, it's a, okay, it's, it's a breakfast spot. 
You get breakfast tacos. How many areas do you find breakfast tacos? There's a lot now that they've been building in LA. There's one in Playa Vista. There's one in uh, Silver Lake. There's a lot now, and I would recommend going there, home state, and you can get a lot of nice little breakfast tacos. This is a phenomenal location for it, right off Ventura. So keep going, coffee roaster, a lot of little coffee shops that you would not notice. Sweet Butter, amazing cafe, go there. It's always packed, so go there early. What else do we got here? I've been to a lot of these places. This is how you know, I grew up in the valley, still go there. Um, several, couple times a week at least. I mean, I live close still, but let's see where we got. We've got, now we've, we're getting towards Studio or uh, Sherman Oaks, and this is where you're gonna find some of the, the nightlife, more nightlife areas in the Valley. Well, there's a couple in Studio City. We've got Arocos, which is a nice sports bar. As I said, Granville, couple others as well. Several Rocos throughout Los Angeles. Okay, Studio, or Sherman Oaks has a lot of nice, Smaller bars, restaurants, places to eat. Marmalade Cafe, that's a LA staple at this point. Anejo Cantina, little Mexican spot right next to this Thai place called, I've actually never been, an adject though. Hmm, interesting, maybe I have to go someday. Blue Jam Cafe taking over LA as well. Starbucks, never heard of it. Let's keep on going. Mulberry Street Pizza, uh, people, this is a classic New York style pizza here in LA. There's a couple other Mulberry Streets throughout the entire LA County. Um, and then this portion of Sherman Oaks, let me show you right here. Let me type in uh, this area here. House of Billiards. So this is a nice, this is a place where maybe there's what, 30 pool tables. If you wanna go out, you wanna shoot some pool. This is the heart of the nightlife in Sherman Oaks. You got the House of Billiards and it's right across the street from a couple other local bars. We're talking nightlife, Mr. Furley's, they have darts. They have the Sherman, a little sports bar with a nice dimmed vibe. If you keep walking along, Medici. Okay, now that's a pizza spot vibe. If you guys, if you guys wanna, if you guys are going on a date, this is a spot to go. There's nice beers there, as well. Beers on tap. They've got great pizza. They make it in front of you. There's a giant tree in the middle of the restaurant. Medici Pizza, and it's right across the street from uh, a Panda Express. Once again, love love my Panda Express. Mardi Gras Tuesday, what else we got here? Happy Day Cafe. This stretch right here, there's a little theater. Used to be a theater, now I think it's a little wellness center, spa or something here on Sherman Oaks. Let me give you a little, I gotta show you what it looks like from my little street guy. There you go. Oh yeah, there's a lot. There's Noah's Bagels right here next to the Jamba, nothing bunt cakes. And then here is, I mean, this is LA. This is a great day. This is typically LA every day. Not a cloud in the sky. You got palm trees and you got Teslas everywhere. That's just basically what LA is. So it is a, it's a medical spa now. This place that used to be a theater that I was talking about right next to a Dave's Hot Chicken, Cold Stone. And there's Medici. And that is, that is Sherman Oaks for you guys. Across the street from uh, several other little retail spots. And then, as I said, you got the Sherman. You got the Woodman around here somewhere, and then you got House of Billiards. But this is what it looks like driving down Ventura Boulevard. It's no Sunset Boulevard. It's better. It's Ventura Boulevard. We're in the San Fernando Valley. Welcome. Welcome. All right, welcome back to the map. Now we're going to get to the opposite side. And so when it comes to housing in Sherman Oaks, it's very similar to Studio City and the rest of the southern portion of the San Fernando Valley here where gets more expensive. There are homes up to $10 million there in, in Sherman Oaks. And so if you go a little more north, what do we got? We got Sherman Oaks Castle Park. Now, you know, LA, here's a problem with LA. They need more mini golf. I think this is the only mini golf. If you made it this far in the video, tell me if you know of any other mini golf areas in LA. Maybe there's one in Torrance, maybe Long Beach. I mean, those places are a little far from the city and the valley, but Sherman Oaks Castle Park is really all we got, and it kind of is a little run down. They got batting cages there, though, which is cool. Um, if you want to take some hacks, feel like you're on the Dodgers, Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, you know, right there. Sherman Oaks Castle Park batting cages, all right. And then you go south, you got the mall in Sherman Oaks, the Galleria with the Buffalo Wild Wings, a couple restaurants, nothing, nothing great, honestly. There's a charging station for Teslas. That is actually probably the worst charging station in LA. You know, I'm just gonna keep it real. But there's a, a theater there in the Galleria AMC, if I am not mistaken. 
and then a P.F. Chang's. That's probably the best place to eat there. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, you can watch sports. Okay, and now we're cutting west of the 405, and we made it to Encino. So what is there to talk about in Encino? A lot. Encino's pretty big. You got the Encino Reservoir here, which there's hiking trails surrounding it. You've got Encino Cuts all the way close down to the Skirball Cultural Center, which is pretty a pretty famous destination in LA. These are this neighborhood's called the Royal Oaks here in Encino. They can go up to twenty million dollars. So Encino, the homes here have gone up over twenty million dollars. Actually, Zed, a DJ, just bought the most expensive home in Encino for twenty. I think eighteen. It was listed for over twenty. Very nice home, I've actually been there, I've actually done videos there on my other channel where I tour luxury homes. If you have not seen that channel, go check it out. And so Encino, there's a couple golf courses in Encino. Probably the most, this is the most greenery that you'll see in the valley. There's the uh, Sepulveda Basin Wildlife Reserve and then three golf courses in Encino. And there's a massive dog park as well. Uh, Woodley Lakes, this is a nice little park. Take the kids, feed the ducks. Sepulveda Basin Sports Complex. There's a lot to, to do when it comes to recreation. Then we're right next to a couple soccer fields. There's actually an archery facility there as well. Like name a, an activity to do. You can do it around here in the Sepulveda Basin. Back to Encino. Let's talk about some nice places to eat in Encino besides another California pizza kitchen. So Encino has, let's go to the heart of Encino. Oh, there we go. More than waffles. This is a, I'm getting hungry just thinking about this place. It's a, one of the better cafes, breakfast spots in Encino, and it's in the Encino Town Center. This is all you need to know when it comes to food in Encino. Check out the Encino Town Center. Phenomenal look to it. And then you cross under right there, the Encino Commons sign. That's how you know you're in Encino. Right next to a Panda Express. How many pandas are we gonna see today? A lot. Yamamoto, Yama, Yamato, sushi, restaurant. Japanese restaurant, not only sushi, it's a huge in there, but it's nice. There's a, there's a Habit, there's a couple other places in Encino. There's a, the Nook, you ever been to the Nook? That's an Encino staple, I would say. Great breakfast place as well. Paris Baguette, amazing coffee in there. And then right next to the Habit, which is obviously the Habit, can do no wrong going to the Habit. But there is the entire Encino Town Center. Look, it's huge. There's a Chili's over here, right? Let's see where the Chili's is. There it is. I mean, Chili's, that... Is Chili's just uh, one of the most underrated, just franchisee restaurants? If you're not going to Chili's, what are you doing? Even though I haven't been in maybe 10 years. All right, this is Encino. It's beautiful. Palm trees, of course. We are still in LA. Let's, uh, let's keep on seeing what else we've got around here. Chick-fil-A, there's a, the high schools in Encino are nice, Crespi Charter High School, that's private school, all boys actually, and in Sherman Oaks there's Notre Dame High School, if we're talking private high schools, where is it, Notre Dame High School, then you got Louis Armstrong Middle School, people will typically hop from Louis Armstrong Middle School to Notre Dame High School, and so Sherman Oaks and Encino in general, they have great elementary, middle, and high schools. If you go up to Van Nuys, then you'll get Van Nuys Middle School and Kester Avenue Elementary School right next to each other. Typically, people go from Kester to Van Nuys Middle School. But if you go a little more south, there are Louis Armstrong Middle School is a little nicer, I'd say, than Van Nuys Middle School uh, when it comes to the demographic and just the it's Van Nuys versus Sherman Oaks, basically. Sherman Village, good little area. And then you got Los Angeles Valley College. I mean, I haven't talked about too many of the community colleges out here yet, but LA Valley College is an amazing college. They've done a great job with the campus, brand new facilities when it comes to the football stadium and the baseball field. And just a really nice campus overall for a, a, a community college, Van Nuys, or uh, LA Valley College. And all right, we're back in Encino. What else do we got? That's pretty much it in Encino. Very high end, a little expensive. If you go north of Ventura, typically here in this area, it's main, there's a lot of condos, a lot of single family homes as well. A lot of new construction, modern farmhouses are being built, but a lot of condos, you can buy something for 700,000 older condos in Encino in a great area. When it, like over here, this is where all the condos are. All condos, no commercial buildings. This is my, 
This looks similar on the satellite to what we saw in the Canoga Park area, but these are all decent condos with, I mean, just look from above. You've got pools, you've got trees. Is There's some solid areas to live from the $700,000 to $900,000 range if you're buying a home. Okay, but now, now we've, we're leaving Encino. We're going to Tarzana. Tarzana, named after Tarzan, you guessed it. And so, Tarzana, let's see. We've got Braemar Country Club. Now, that is a private country club. I've heard it's the hardest golf course in L.A. You've got El Caballo, El Caballero Country Club. You've got expensive homes everywhere south of the boulevard. Still in Tarzana, everything's going to be expensive. One five, probably the cheapest home you can get. Up to seven, eight, nine even now these days. New construction homes. I've seen a couple moderns in Tarzana. I think Chris Brown has the most expensive home in Tarzana. Selena Gomez used to live there. Uh, a lot of A-list celebs down here south of the boulevard. Tarzana, they have everything you'd need, but a little bit, a little bit less than Encino. You've got, you got this Vons, this shopping center right here. This is Tarzana Square. The Black Bear Diner, this is a nice place to eat as well. Good little diner options. Sushi spots, pizza spots. There's four, su three sushi spots right here in this Tarzana Square. And then we've got another coffee road. Landry, oh wow, I was actually just there a couple days ago. That's a nice coffee, but I think it's like $9.50 for a typical latte, which I mean, that's you gotta expect that in LA. If you complain about the price of coffee, just make it at home, you know, pay $10 or pay zero. That's what I say. Hummus Bar and Grill, love a Mediterranean spot, CeCe's Cafe. It's not that many spots in Tarzana. Everything's a little more spread out. But you do have Sol y Luna. Wow, this is a Mexican place where I feel like probably the most popular Mexican restaurant. This place gets packed Thursday through Sunday. Sol y Luna, good Mexican food overall. Nice. It's a restaurant. It's not just a typical. It's not like a El Pollo Loco. It's a solid looking restaurant when you walk inside. Very similar to Carl's Jr. I'm just kidding. It's not. It's not. El Pollo Loco, in and out You got all your typical fast foods. That's what Tarzana mainly has. I'd say if you want different food, you'd go to Encino. If you want more restaurants, more options, a bit wider variety. When it comes to high schools, Taft High School is here in Tarzana. There's a lot going on at Taft. A lot of apartment buildings along Ventura Boulevard, but let's go a little more south. A lot of hiking trails here in Tarzana. Oh, so I didn't talk about the Reseda. If you go up Reseda, there's a great hiking spot. Great hiking trail up Reseda. There's a lot of people that hike this trail, but all the way down Reseda, you go past the Mulholland Park um, community. This is a super nice community. I think this is one of the more underrated neighborhoods. It's a gated community. I mean, they have an incredible gate out front. It just says MP from Mulholland Park. Homes are unbelievable. Great views as well. But if you keep going up Reseda, you go to this hiking trail, take you around here. I don't know what all the names are. You got the, okay, not the Van Alden hiking head, but you can get all the way around this hiking trails. You get great views of the valley from Reseda. Even if you just walk up Reseda, that's going to be a steep hike. But there's a lot of homes around here. These are all up in the hills. Let's go back down to, okay, Woodland Hills. Woodland Hills Country Club, another private country club in Woodland Hills. And a lot of great spots in Woodland Hills. A lot to talk about here in Woodland Hills as we've almost looped all the way around the valley at this point. How long is this video? I don't, I don't even, couldn't even tell you. Are we, are we getting on to close to an hour? The valley's large, guys. The valley is large, and I'm sure there's a lot that I missed if you're still watching. So here in Woodland Hills, there's a lot of apartment buildings on Ventura Boulevard. You have the Boulevard and the Avalon, two large apartment complexes right next to each other. They make up for over a thousand units right here. Um, and what else in Woodland Hills? All right, I mean, there's a lot of car dealerships. You got Porsche, you got Lexus, you got a couple, you got your local grocery stores, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Amazon Go, Sprouts, everything right here along the uh, 101 intersection with Topanga. That's why this is a major hub here in the valley. But now if we go north, this is where all the fun stuff in Woodland Hills happens because you got all the the best malls in the valley. I'm just going to say it as it is. These are the best malls because you have uh, the village first off. You have the Woodland, so there's there's a lot here in Woodland Hills. You got the Warner Warner Center towers. You've got a lot of condo communities 
older apartment complexes here. You got the Summit at Warner Center, which is, I don't know, they've probably seen better days. You got uh, some smaller neighborhoods here on the east side. And then if you go north, Pierce College, another community college. And if you go west, here's where we got some higher end restaurants. You've got Maggiano's, you've got the Westfield Promenade, which actually they are, I don't even think Maggiano's is around still because they are tearing this entire property down and building the new Rams practice stadium here in Woodland Hills, guys. How crazy is that? The property prices are going to go up in the next 10 years, and they're going to be do using it a lot for the 2028 Olympics. But as you keep going north, this is where the... So this is going to be a stadium coming soon. That's why the head coach and the quarterback of the Rams moved to Hidden Hills close by. We'll touch on Hidden Hills at the very end of the video. So here in the Topanga Village, very nice outdoor mall. You've got a 24-hour fitness. You've got great little food spots such as Kava, Sweet Fin, and then you've got high-end spots. You've got a Larson's Expensive Steakhouse. You've got Joey's, which is a very nice restaurant as well. Zoc Tequila, Mexican Grill. Uh, there's Joey's right there. And then a giant Costco gets super packed. And if you keep going north, Topanga Social, brand new food court in the Topanga Mall. Westfield Topanga Mall is massive. This is a, It competes with the Century City Mall as well. Century City Westfield Mall, but Century City Mall is definitely nicer. It's in Century City. It's just aesthetically nicer, but it's almost, it's, a, it's bigger than the Topanga Mall, but Topanga Mall definitely competes. You got everything you need at the Topanga Mall. And then you got this dirt lot. There's a nice backstory about this dirt lot. They did tear down a couple buildings. They were going to build... Uh, massive apartment complexes are there. I think they still have that in plans because of what Woodland Hills is going to be doing in the next five plus years. So I think 300, maybe a really nice hotel and a ton of apartment complexes is, is what's going to be going on here. When it comes to apartments in Woodland Hills, I'd say the most like modern, luxurious, high-end looking apartment buildings are in Woodland Hills. You've got the Q Varial and the Q Topanga. Maybe I can just show you what the Q Topanga looks like because it is right here. And this, look at that. There's there's a nice high end and it's not, you can get a one bedroom for under 3,000 a month, which you can't on the west side over the Santa Monica Mountains. But it's very modern and you don't see apartment buildings that have, that look like this, that have been built in the past few years, really anywhere else but here in the southern portion of the valley. And Willard Hill specifically, they built a Q they built three of those. There's one that's going to be going on to Soto, Q to Soto, Q Varial, Q Topanga. And here on the west, there's a lot of condo, more condos here in Woodland Hills. High end. There's another, there's another couple nice restaurants in Woodland Hills. Casalina, brand new. They opened like a month or so ago, a couple months ago. Very high end. I'd say a lot of people come here from Calabasas, Hidden Hills, because it's super fancy, super nice. Woodland Hills is doing a great job. In this day and age i'd say one of the the better neighborhoods in the valley and then here these are all windy roads up in the hills in woodland hills you've got another high school louisville this is an all girls high school as you saw crespi i was saying louisville is an all girls high school and its neighbor crespi is an all boys high school over there in tarzana more high schools you got calabasas high school now i mean their calabasas high school is trending and it goes viral because of how nice the cars are of the kids that go to Calabasas High. And that's because, I mean, it's it's a nice, it's one of the nicest public schools. It, it is Calabasas High School. I mean, Calabasas has a lot of great communities, great neighborhoods. Look at this, oops, south of the boulevard here. And now Calabasas, Ventura Boulevard ends, and it's south of the 101 freeway. Calabasas has a lot of gated communities. Look at all these. You got Calabasas Highlands, Park Estates, Calabasas Hills. You got the Oaks over there. You got Calabasas Park, Westridge, Vista Point. So many different gated communities. Calabasas Country Club runs right through it. A lot of hidden gems, Mountain Park. There's a lot going on in Calabasas. And you can take Mulholland Highway all the way down through the Santa Monica Mountains. And here in Calabasas, there's not that many nice... That's why they had to build Casalina over there in Woodland Hills. There's not a crazy amount of high-end nice restaurants in Calabasas. You have this shopping center where there's a couple cafes you got maria's italian kitchen then you've got blue jam 
And then if you keep going here on Calabasas Road, you've got the Calabasas Commons, where I'm sure if you know anything about Calabasas, you've heard there's a movie theater, there's a marmalade, King's Fish House, Barnes & Noble, there's like a Lululemon, Sephora, all of the outdoor shopping. There's also a Tesla charging station there if you uh, get lost off the 101 and need to charge your car. Good charging station, way better than the Sherman Oaks one. Hilton Garden in Calabasas, there's a few little hotels in this portion, Barney, there's a there's a Barney's in Cal. I didn't know that. Is that's crazy? Wow, there's a, like eight or nine Barney's in LA. I did not know there was one in Calabasas or in the Valley. That's I gotta check that one out. There's a lot. There's one in West Hollywood. Well, there's one everywhere. There's a lot of nice Barney's around the city. And so this is where you're gonna be doing most of your shopping, your dining, whatnot. There's a very popular sugar fish there at the mall as well. If you haven't been, Sagebrush Cantina. It's a great spot. It's a definitely hit or miss depending on the night. Right across from Peddler's Fork, a cool little bar as well here in Calabasas. But like I said, there's not that many places in Calabasas to, to dine. It's very small. It's why you might cross the 101 and go into the city or go to Woodland Hills, go somewhere over there as well. But then you've got Hidden Hills. Now, Hidden Hills is not Calabasas. It's its own city, actually, which some people might not know. There are a few different gates. You can enter either through the Valley Circle side up here, or you can enter right off the 101 as well. And there's another gate over there on the east, on the west side too. But Hidden Hills, I mean, I'm sure you, if you know anything about Hidden Hills, it's one of the most prestigious communities for celebrities. It's, it's a ranch style neighborhood where there's a lot of white picket fences and dirt trails you'll see more people walking their horses than walking their dogs which is unique and i'm not lying about that i'm i'm serious el camino high school it's a public school and then you've got hale charter academy that is a middle school you go from hale to el camino or if you want private you go probably up to chaminade college prep there is a lot of great restaurants here in this port this is this is west hills technically here east of Hidden Hills, because if you go south, then there's Calabasas. So Hidden Hills basically between West Hills and Calabasas, and you got this area, the Fallbrook Center, lots of large retail stores, and there's a mall there, I mean, the movie theater there, AMC Fallbrook, Home Depot, Target, everything you need when it comes to shopping. And then as you keep going west on the 101, you leave, you leave the LA County, you leave the Valley, you enter into the Ventura County, Westlake, and everything over there. And I, I think I'm out of breath. Reseda, Lake Balboa, Winnetka, it's all very similar, all uh, in the more lower end area of the valley, but great, great restaurants, great mom and pop shops in those areas as well if you're looking for any kind of food. Let's see what pops up here. Okay, a little botanical lounge, non-alcoholic lounge. Well, I've seen a lot more of those popping up in LA as of late, if you don't drink. But I think that was everything in Los Angeles. I have no idea how long this video is until I get it in the editing booth and we, we put it together. But thank you guys for watching till the end. If you had learned anything about the San Fernando Valley, let me know what your thoughts were on this video. I just did an entire loop, uh, complete, completely raw video on one take. So let me know if I missed anything that you wanted to know about the valley as well. I have no idea what I could have missed, but if you wanted to know something and you didn't, leave a comment below on what that is specifically. Hit the like button if you made it this far, subscribe, comment if you've watched this part of the video as well. My name is Darren Kriz. I have a real estate marketing and sales team out here in the Los Angeles County, the greatest city in the world. Los Angeles, we help clients buy, sell, invest, and rent property every day. Check out some of the other videos on my channel, whether that's a house tour, an informational video, video about some of the new construction communities in LA if you're interested in purchasing real estate as well. Appreciate you guys for watching. The San Fernando Valley is home. Let me know if it was home or is home for you as well. We'll see you guys on the next one.